بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأتى الراهب فأخبره فقال له الراهب أي بني أنت اليوم أفضل مني قد بلغ من أمرك ما أرى وإنك ستبتلى فإني بتليت فلا تدل علي إلى آخر الحديث وبشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقر قولي ربي زيدي علما الله صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم الله صل على محمد نبيك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات We continue the hadith of the Suhib رضي الله عنه where he narrates from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم about around 70 years before his birth an incident took place where a magician who was famous, he was in his old age, he requested the king to appoint somebody who he can teach his skills. So the king, he chose a young lad, Abdullah ibn Abdul Tamir, who would come to the magician to learn. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had other plans so this young lad who would come to the magician on the way would stop by a monk who was a devoted Christian and he would learn the divine knowledge from him. And the story continued where the king afterwards found out that the boy does not believe in what the king has told him to believe in and also one of his close associate, one of his ministers had also you know, believed in the creator and the Lord of this monk. So this is where we left last in our last verse, where the king called the minister. So he told this minister to, um, you know, to turn back to his old religion, but he refused. And also, the, the rahib and the monk was also asked to do this. <coughs> he also refused. So, فَدَعَ بِالْمِنْشَارِ فَوُضِعَ الْمِنْشَارُ فِي مَفْرِقِ رَأْسِهِ فَشَقَّهُ حَتَّى وَقَاشِقَّهُ So, the king, now, as it happens that when the person doesn't listen, when they don't get their way, they use power. So, the king, he asked for a saw that you cut the wood with. And he brought the, the monk in front of him and he slit the monk into two halves. The person, from the middle, and both sides, his body fell apart. Then the minister was also called and he was also told, told to turn back to his own religion, Fa'aba, but he refused, Fawdi al minshar again, same thing happened to him, that where the saw was put in the middle, and he was slit into two, hatta waqa'a shiqahu, thumma ji'a bil ghulami, now the third person was the child himself, this young lad, thumma ji'a bil ghulam, bil ghulam, and he was called, faqila lahu irji'an deenik fa'aba, he was also told to turn back to his own religion, turn back to him believing in the king, but fa'aba, he refused, فَدَفَعَهُ إِلَىٰ نَفْرٍ مِنْ أَصْحَابِهِ This time the king didn't slit him into, into two. What did he do? He asked some of his ashab and some of his uh, colleagues, some of his people, and he said to them, اِذْهَبُوا بِهِ إِلَىٰ جَبَلِ كَذَا وَكَذَا That do, take him to this such and such mountain. فَصْعَدُوا بِهِ الْجَبَلِ And climb right to the top of the ذِرْوَتَهُ To the top of this mountain. فَإِنْ رَجَعَ عَنْ دِينِهِ Now right at the top, when you see right at the top, ask him again. Does he turn back to his own religion or not? If he refuses, If he refuses, then what he do is throw him off the mountain. فَذْهَبُوا بِهِ فَصَعِيدُوا بِهِ الْجَبَلِ So the people took this young lad right to the top of the mountain. When he got right to the top, the young person made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اللَّهُمَ اَخْفِنِهِمْ بِمَا شِئْتَ The dua he made that, Oh Allah, save me from them. You become sufficient for me in what their plans are. What they're deciding, you become sufficient for me. You become kafi for me. فَرَجَفَ بِهِمْ الْجُبَلِ And he was right to the top and he made dua. 
Immediately, the dua of this young lad was accepted and the mountain started shaking. When this happened, the people who had come, they fell down the mountain themselves and he was saved. They fell, وَجَاءَ yamshi, and this young lad climbed down the mountain. He came back to the king. So the king was amazed at what's happened here. مَا فَعَلَ أَصْحَابُكَ قَالَ كَفَانِهِمُ اللَّهِ So he asked, where's the other people come that they took them, that took you? So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me from them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for me. Now he got another group. فَدَفَعُوا إِلَىٰ نَفَرٍ مِنَ أَصْحَابِهِ فَقَالَ إِذَوُوا بِهِ فَحْمِلُهُ فِي فُرْقُورِ And this time the second group were told that take him, put him onto a boat and فَتَوَسَّطُوهُ بِهِ الْبَحْرِ Take him right to the middle of the ocean. Right in the middle of the ocean. Again, when he's there, ask him that does he renounce his religion? Does he turn back to his own religion or not? فَإِنْ رَجَعَ عَنْدِينِ وَإِلَّا فَقْضِفُوهُ If he doesn't, throw him into the, into the water, into the ocean. So again, he got right to the middle. He made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makfinim bi mashita. That Allah become kafi for me, become sufficient for me on what these people have intended. فَانْكَفَأَتْ بِهِمُ السَّفِينَةُ فَغَلِقُوا And when this dua was made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, accepted the dua. And then the boat started shaking and the other people drowned. And he was saved and he sailed back. To the show and فقال له وجاء يمشي للملك and he came back to the king. فقال له الملك ما فعل أصحابك. So the king asked again, what happened? فقال كفاني الله الله سبحانه وتعالى سيبي. فقال للملك إنك لست بقاتلي حتى تفعل ما أمرك. وقال ما هو. This time the young lad spoke up. Look, you want to kill me? You want to you know finish me off? You're not going to be able to do this until I tell you how to kill me. Until I don't guide you. You're not going to be able to finish me off. You're not going to be able to uh, kill me. So the king was shocked and goes, what, you know, what, what is the way then? How should I finish you? How can I kill you? So, قَالَتْ تَجْمَعُ النَّاسَ فِي سَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ وَتَصْلُبُنِي حَتْ عَلَى جِذْعٍ ثُمَّ خُذْ سَهْمًا مِنْ كِنَانَتِي ثُمَّ ضَعِي السَّهْمَ فِي كَبِدِ الْقَوْسِ ثُمَّ قُلْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ رَبَّ رَبِّ الْغُلَامِ So he said, look, the young lad spoke up and he said, look, what you do is that gather everyone on one huge plain eddy, one land. You know, gather everybody there. And then put me on, uh, and, uh, uh, and hang me up. Hang me up in front of everybody on a trunk or a tree or something. So where everybody can see me. Where everybody can see me. Then what you do is that take an arrow from my quiver, take one arrow, and then take, shoot this arrow towards me. However, when you're shooting this arrow towards me, say this. Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam. Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam. Shoot this arrow, take in the name of the Rabb. Take in the name of Allah, the Rabb and the Lord of this Ghulam, of this young lad. Then, when you throw this arrow, then you'll be able to kill me. Then you'll be able to finish me off. So, فَجَمَعَ النَّاسِ فِي سَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ وَصَلَبَهُ عَتَّى عَلَى جِذْعٍ So this is what happened. So the king made an announcement and he ordered everybody to gather everybody in this one land. He hung this young lad up onto this tree, onto a trunk, got the arrow, and he sought and shot this arrow towards this ghulam, towards this young lad, with this same, Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam, in the name of Allah, the Rabb and the Lord of this ghulam. ثُمَّ رَمَّاهُ فَوَقَاهَ السَّهْمُ فِي صُدْغِهِ فَوَضَعَ يَدَهُ فِي صُدْغِهِ فِي مَوْضِعِ السَّهْمِ فَمَاتَ فَقَالَ النَّاسِ So when he shot this arrow towards this um, um, the young lad, he hit in the head, so around here, between the two eyes, in the temple area. And as soon as he hit, the boy, according to some narration, he says that he also placed his hand in the way to, you know, to block the arrow. But the arrow penetrated and he passed away and he was martyred on the spot. Seeing this, فَقَالَ nas, the public that were present there, they said, آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْغُلَامِ All of them spoke out that we believe in the Rabb of this Ghulam, we believe in the Rabb of this Ghulam, we believe in the Lord of this, uh, Lord of this young man. Now, here, the young lad put his life at risk. Two attempts were made to kill him, to finish him off. But both of the time he made dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua and he was saved. Now this time he put his life at risk. Why? For the greater benefit. For the greater benefit. And that is when people were to see this, there is a chance that people will believe in the Rabb of this Ghulam. Believe in the Rabb and the Lord of this young lad. So he put his life at risk. 
And this is exactly what happened as he had thought that if I do this and if I sacrifice my life, others will also believe in me. So the king, when he saw this, فَأُوْتِيَ الْمَلِكِ فَقِيلَ لَوْ أَرَأَيْتَ مَا كُنْتَ تَحْذَرُ قَدْ وَاللَّهِ مَنَزَلَ بِكَ حَذَرُكَ قَدْ آمَنَ النَّاسِ Now the courtiers of the king, the, his ministers and everybody said to him, that, look, you see what's happened, you were aiming for something else and something has happened, you had planned and you know, some, uh, you know, it's gone against your plan. So now when the king realized what's happened, again he used his power again. Now one point here is first of all, this young lad, he put life at risk. He knew that martyrdom and being, you know, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and living in this world is more greater than this world. There's nothing in this world to pass away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ilai kalimatullah is better. Depending on our own situation, what do we do? We don't need to put our life at risk, but what we do is we don't put our deen at risk. We don't need to go out to put our life at risk. What we need to do, especially in this time and this part of the world, is we don't put our deen at risk. Many a time people compromise things. In Surah Al-Kafirun, we discussed this previously, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Rasulullah sallallahu clearly, that tell the disbelievers, your deen is your deen, my deen is my deen, I will keep my deen and you keep your deen. We have our way, you have your way, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to compromise. And it's very difficult, very difficult living in this uh, you know, working in such environment, many a time people compromise their religion in many practices, many, many, many practices. For example, it comes to, you know, celebrations, it comes to parties, and, you know, other times and other occasions we try to, you know, blend in with them, so, and, you know, we can be part of them to, for their, so they may, you know, come closer to us. But when it comes to that situation where we compromise the practices, when we compromise sunnats, there's more harm than benefit. There's more harm in than benefit. So we should always think that my deen is telling me this, the society or the public are expecting this. I can't compromise my deen. I can't compromise. There's a nice way and you know, polite way of excusing yourself and moving yourself out of that without causing any issues between the people. Person should do that. So we don't compromise our religion. And when we do this, our children will also notice that my father didn't go to the you know, workplace, had a party at the end of the year or the end of the, you know, some celebration time. My parents, my father didn't go, my mother didn't go. They will notice these things. They will notice that they didn't go. There was a mix. You know, many times Allah protect. Sometimes we, you know, some, it's happened previously where the madrasa ustaz went somewhere to eat and in the same restaurant, we see there's other Muslim people with, you know, Allah protect with good ba background as well and sat there with their colleagues, mixed environment. And these sort of things causes, you know, there's a very silent harm in it. The silent messages that the children will notice these things. So, you know, as I say, the actions speak louder than words. When you're telling our children one thing, but when we do something else, they will pick up what we did. They will pick up what we have done. If you're telling them we we'll wake up for Fajr numbers and we don't wake up ourselves, they turn around and tell us in Madras and Mamara doesn't wake up, why should I wake up? My mom doesn't do this, so why should I do this? So it's very, very you know, important that we take these points. So the point that we learn from this, so much, uh, this part of the hadith is that we don't compromise our practices of our religion. We don't compromise. Inshallah, when we try to stay firm, when we uh, uh, have that correct intention, Allah will make ways for us. Allah will save us and Allah will make ways for us. To conclude on a little story, I can't remember the complete story, but there was a young girl you know, when you're at the airport and there's an immigration point where they have to check your ID. So some airports, they sometimes, you know, become very difficult. They said that you have to take your scarf off in order to check the ID. So the mother said, no, just, you know, she did it and she got herself through. But the young girl who has just become balig, yeah, very young, 13, 14 years old, she said, no, I'm not going to do this. I can't take my scarf off and put it in my conduit. And they weren't ready to compromise and they weren't able to, you know, ready to have a female to check the ID. She said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And she stayed firm on that. She said, no, no, no. And the mother's at the back said, just do it, just do it, just for this, just for this. Like, it's only for this, it's only for this. Nothing's going to harm, nothing's going to harm. She said, no, 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 no. And they missed the flight. They missed that flight and the plane flew off. Ten minutes later, they found out the plane that they were supposed to be in crashed and all the passengers in that plane died. 
So when we are firm on our deen, depending on the situation, depending on our amal, depending on our intention, depending on our halat, we will see benefit. We will see the, you know, the fayda of it. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make ways for us, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the correct understanding and the ability and the strength to stay firm on our deen, to stay firm on the practices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also as and our children as well, very you know, difficult moment, difficult time for them. Wherever they are going, wherever they are, at home, in the school environment, in the college environment, with their friends outside, is a challenge and upon challenge, upon challenge, the challenge is becoming more and more difficult. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them, grant them steadfastness, istiqamat upon the deen, upon the religion, upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah we'll finish up the hadith in our next gathering. Allahumma amin subhanallah bihamdi subhanakum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. And the greatest example we see in the clinic, in the children of Palestine, they have nothing, nothing on the day of the Eid. They are remembering their death, uh, they are remembering their disease and they are remembering their martyrs and they are asking each other how much khatams have we done and how much Quran have we read in this. You know, this is who they are. So they are living example for us. We don't even need to go anywhere else. They living example for us where anybody will come with wealth and with money, but they say, no, deen is deen. We're not going to lose our deen. Hasbunallah, hasbunallah, Allah is sufficient for us. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakum, wa bihamdi, kishadu la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhanallah, rabbika rabbil izzati, ma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-musaleen, wa alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, bi rahmatik ya akhir.